Take us through the first day you met Kobe Bryant. How about did I ever meet Kobe Bryant? No, yeah. I don't think I ever met Kobe Bryant. Never shook your hand. I mean, we might have gave him, gave him, given me dap, you know, on a basketball court, but you know, we never talked. We never hung out. Um, you never no, went up and said what's up when no, you. There was no. There was none of that. Unfortunately, it was just a coworker. Never, never really engaged. But, but were you the only one, or he just didn't talk no, with anybody? No, anybody. So there was nobody on that team that he was cool with. Um, he might have been cool with Lamar Odom. He might have chopped it up with him a little bit. Um, why do you think he was cool with him? I don't want to, you know, get into that. You know, I don't know why he chose to uh, be friendly, friendlier to others than he was to to others. But you know, it was a, it was a situation where. I, at the end of the day, was in the wrong for you know some of the decisions that I you know I made when I was when I was in L.A. No, what do you mean by that? No, because at the end of the day, he he was the leader. Yeah, he was the leader, hands down. He was the leader. I wasn't coming in to you know try to de- de- dethrone him. I wasn't, you know, my job wasn't to come in and be a leader. You know, um, my job was to fall in line. Mm. And you know, um, I didn't fall in line. Yeah, it don't matter. Who, Is there a reason why you didn't it do that? Well, because I'm I'm from Brooklyn. I'm hard headed. Mm. I'm stubborn. Mm. I mean, it's it's a gift and a curse. You know, it got me. It got to. It got me to where I needed to get to. But it also, you know, uh, got me cut. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, when you speak about when people speak about uh, your relationship with Kobe, mm-hmm. you know, it usually always gets a bad rap. Yeah. You know, but in the Western Conference series against the Suns, where you stole the ball from Steve Nash, yes, sir, to help tie the game, mm-hmm. there was a big embrace between the two of you, mm-hmm. you and Kobe. Do you remember any of good moments with him like that? Yeah, we had several, and and a lot. What a lot of people don't understand is me and Kobe really never had a falling out when I was in L.A. We never had a falling out. We never had an exchange of negative words. We never had an exchange of him saying, yo, you suck, or why are you even here? And me, I never said to him, yo, nigga, pass the ball. Like, it was nothing. We, it was just, we were teammates. You know, I, he, when, when you did see him talk to me on the court, it was, yo, you know, um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Look for me here. Or, you know, w- when you do this, try to do that. Like, he, it, was, it was all basketball commu- uh, commu- It was a basketball relationship. You know, when we stepped on the court, we both wore the Laker jersey, so we were both, we both had the same agenda. To True. Try, try Teammates. To, yeah. But, you know, outside of the court, we just never, he went his way, I went mine. And, and it, it, it was never any bad animosity. I remember you told me a long time ago that that organization catered to him like, like, no, like you never seen before, you know, meaning. Uh, I mean, I might have been out of, out of line for saying that. Yeah. No, I'm not I mean, trying to say. No, I, I might have been. Yeah. No, I might have been. You know, immature in some of the things that I said. You know, in previous in- interviews about, you know, uh, my relationship with Kobe and the organization and things like that. You know, uh, but you know, like you said, I'm from Brooklyn and I keep it real. I speak my mind. I don't hold my tongue. And do I regret some of the stuff I said? No. Mm. Uh, will I repeat some of the said I, uh, stuff I said? No. Mm. But I don't regret it. I mean, at the end of the day, I was. I was honest with uh, with my feelings. I was true to myself, and I will never try to you know sit here and say that I want to retract a statement because I said what was on my heart. Yeah, you ever run into him again? No. no. Yeah, listen, you know I, it is fun. The only thing I didn't enjoy, to be honest with you, uh, you know I respect Kobe as a as a player and an icon in the mm-hmm. NBA, but uh, you know when they brought up that issue that you had with him, super cocky. And I guess he's just throwing shade back if he mm-hmm. felt that shade was coming his mm-hmm. way. But you know, I didn't particularly even from knowing you, I didn't like the way uh, you know, he was like, um you know, was he all oh, playing in um you know, France or was he playing uh, overseas? Well, tell him maybe he'll get it, he'll get back here one day and see what they we do over here. Like I don't know if you you heard yeah, that. I'm I mean, sure. yeah. it was a it was a bunch of interviews that he did afterwards and like you, you hit it on the head when you said that he was just trying to, you know, get back, you know, at some of the things I said about him. Yeah. You know, um, I, uh, for for a lot of the people who don't know what happened, 
Um, like I said, I told you that we didn't have any bad blood when I was in L.A., um, but I did do an interview, some something similar to like this, a little podcast at, down at West 4th Street. And some of the things I said went viral, and they were, you know, about him and what my thoughts were about some of his his leadership decisions and who he didn't talk to and some of the things he actually did say to me uh, while I was out there. And it went viral, and I guess, it, you know, it, it hurt his feelings. It hurt his ego, and his pride was, you know, cut a little bit, so he decided to retaliate. Mm. Mm. Listen, you played under Phil Jackson, the good Phil Jackson. As a Nick fan, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't even want, I don't even fucking like saying his name oh, anymore. Man. But you played under Phil Jackson, yes, sir. which they call obviously the Zen Master. The Zen Master. Let me ask you, something. what, uh, what odd things would you would he do in practice? No, funny story. What games? Uh, I don't have any uh, odd uh, things that he would do because I didn't find anything. And Odd he, that he did. Yeah, but the funniest thing in the world to me was uh, when I was playing in L.A., this was the time where he was having back issues and he mm -hmm. just got finished having back surgery and he needed his high chair to sit on the sideline. But, he, you know, it, it, it was uncomfortable for him to walk. So I don't know if you remember back, um, what do they call them, those big uh, scooters they had. Before the hoverboards, they had, like, the, the big wheels. You stand on there, and you kind of lean oh, forward. Oh, yeah, like that mall cop dude. I yeah, forgot, yeah, yeah. What are they, what, what, they what, are they, what are those called? I don't even know. Well, they had... Segways. Segways, Segways okay. Just imagine, Phil Jackson is about 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, Just imagine this big 6'8", six, 6'9", six, riding a Segway in the gym, coaching. <laughs> while we're in, in practice, just rolling around like he's RoboCop <laughs> on this Segway. With a straight back. With a know. whistle. Listen, we running up and down the court, you know, fast break. He's rolling on the sideline. You know, it was the craziest, you know, scene. You know, just just picture it. Just try to picture you on a basketball court and this 6'10 guy now is on a Segway just rolling in, in the gym. What are some things that he's said to you over that time there that uh, stuck with you? Um, no, he's, he's, he's uh, a real mellow kind of guy. He never really had a lot to say because he's not a teacher. He's a motivator. Mm -hmm. He didn't, you know, he wasn't an uh, uh, overly coaching coach, but he allowed his players to play, and that's how he, that's what, made, that's what makes him great because he allows his players to play. It's a comfortable environment. You go out there and, and play your game, play, play through your mistakes, not get, you know, subbed out because you made a mistake, like some coaches. You know, he he was big on not embarrassing you as a player. And he said that. I'm no, I'm I'm not here to try to embarrass you as a player. So what he would do is if you messed up during a game, he wouldn't like sub you out the next play, like most like most coaches do. Sure. He 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 will let the play go on four or five possessions before he subbed you out. Because he also wanted to see if you was mentally strong enough to play through your 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 mess up. Mm. That's what he was about, you know, being mentally tough. He wanted mentally tough players.